Hello everyone, it's America Man here. If you're like me, watching the trailers for Doom Eternal over and over again, in eager anticipation for its release, inappropriate for children, now why would you say it? Oh yeah, 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 that sounds about right. Doom 2016. Arguably one of the best first-person shooters in recent years, where the sole objective of the game is to frantically run and gun, mercilessly massacring unending hordes of demons. It obviously differs from most other shooter titles, that usually require the player to take cover and move carefully, carefully thinking about combat situations. Not Doom, though. The Doom Slayer is a roaring storm of violence and aggression, with an insatiable thirst for Hellspawn blood. With all that said, there are several ways to make this absolute unit of a man into a more effective war machine. You're insisting on a fistin'! There's all sorts of upgrades, gadgets, and gizmos, ways to make your guns more effective, your Praetor suit more useful and survivable, but what we want to feast our eyes on here are the runes. These runes exist to spice things up in the Slayer's arsenal. You find these runes in specific locations scattered throughout the levels in the campaign. Of all the different varieties of runes you can get, you can only have up to three to fill in the slots that you have. But honestly, that's all you're really gonna need. The three runes in particular are Dazed and Confused, Armor Defensive, and Rich Get Richer. They act in synergy to one another, to quite literally give you infinite ammo. Just as long as you maintain a certain level of armor integrity, of course. Starting from the top, Dazed and Confused. Increases how long demons remain in a staggered state. It's this staggered state that gives you the opportunity to perform what is called glory kills. Upon glory killing them gloriously, this is where armor defensive kicks in. This rune makes it so that armor flies out of their mangled corpses. And to tie it all together is Rich Get Richer, which gives you infinite ammo when you have at least 100 armor or more. But when you upgrade it though, the requirement drops down to about 75. So, after you upgrade these, and believe me, you're gonna want to upgrade these, it makes the whole game significantly easier. Once you find one of these big green floating rune tablets, pressing it will take you to another dimension slash loading screen, where you'll have to complete various different time trials at varying difficulties. The trials for Dazed and Confused and Armored Offensive are fairly easy, but Rich Get Richer can be pretty annoying, especially with the Inviso pinkies and getting caught in your own rocket splash damage. Well, I just turned myself into flesh confetti. Getting and upgrading these turns the Doom guy from being the rip and tear, hardcore parkour, frantic platformer we all know and love into being a semi-stationary cyclone of chaos and carnage. Just as long as you stray from side to side on occasion for when they decide to throw fireballs at you, not to mention to check your corners. This method easily lowers the difficulty level of whatever you're playing at in the moment. If you're playing it on Ultra Violence, it honestly drops down to Hurt Me Plenty. If you're playing on Hurt Me Plenty, it drops it down to I'm Too Young to Die. If you're on I'm Too Young to Die, well, the game simply becomes a cool and gentle breeze brushing across your face. If that breeze is consistent of demonic visceral and blaring gunfire, that is. As you know, I had to put this to the test. So I plopped myself down in one of the early levels, Though I'm playing on ultraviolence difficulty, blasting these small fries away is a breeze. This method is most effective with the heavy machine gun, plasma rifle, aka the bubble gun, <laughs> and my personal favorite, the chain gun. Nothing says American like dispensing 60 rounds of freedom every second. One that I have a modest 4,300 plus kills with. Compare that with just the 10 with the pea shooter pistol you get at the beginning of the game. <laughs> You're about to find out why. You can tell by their arrival and the atmosphere that these guys are trying to set that these diabolical demons want you to think that it's some kind of survival horror game. <laughs> You're in the wrong genre, pipsqueak. But actually it's an action thriller slash dark comedy, as in, you're not stuck in there with them. You're locked in here with me! Yeah, I ignored the plot, myrtleized more demons, and made the rocket's red glare glare with red. Lots of red. From close range to far off, these maniacal monsters stood no chance against this here chest-mounted, tri-barreled triple chain gun. Bonked a button and platformed my way to another lovely little gore pit. An automated voice reminded me that this is an unsafe level of demonic invasion. Whatever a unsafe level of demonic invasion means, 
I took it as their numbers needed a little trimming. And what I mean by trimming, well... Yeah, doing this while thumping BFG Division is just amazing. But while editing this, <laughs> while editing this video, I realized how the demeanor of this fight changes if you simply remove the ear thumping, head banging, badass Mick Gordon metal soundtrack with something a bit more lighthearted. After a while, realizing this level isn't going to challenge this method in the way that it's needed, even on Voltra Violence difficulty, face check, back adjustment, may I lend you your hand? I picked a level that had a boss at the end of it, Lazarus Labs, where I then ignored more plot, because I don't need more of a reason to kill demons. The friggin' demons! That's plenty reason to mince their meat. I could essentially run through the whole level with my finger on the trigger of this gun, but that would drown out the awesome soundtrack in the background, and I don't want to be disrespectful to Mick Gordon like that. No, ladies and gentlemen, no way. I punched a box, got ammo I didn't need, unclogged a drain, and swatted a few flies. Then popped another big old pimple, which the dastardly devils didn't seem to like very much. Nice and tucked up into this corner, I started blasting and relaxing. One at a time they entered, and one at a time they fell, before my unrelenting firepower. Then I did a stupid, a big stupid. I switched to my super shotgun, and these imps rushed in with reckless abandon. I would say it was a bit of a chore to get my armor back up to speed, but I eventually did and all was well again. At least for a while. This is what a mosh pit in Guantanamo Bay must look like. Do a barrel roll! I bam kerpow blammed my way through the next shootout section, where I promptly handed the demons their assisted social services, also known as their ass. They seem pretty eager to die, so I was eager to kill them. You know, sometimes I like to flex on the hell dwellers by picking up the power-ups after the fight, just so they know I didn't need it to ground them into hamburger meat. You don't need reinforcements when you're a one-man army. I liberated a room full of these freaks of the terrorism of their ugliness, made hamburger meat out of some really unfriendly pinkies, then beeped a boop and opened the door. Needed to replenish myself with the big green bandages of armor, I beeped more boops and listened to Olivia Pierce getting a performance review from her boss. After having the most metal nightmare ever, more terrible terrors decided to attack my bullets with their faces. The hardest part about this section wasn't just the big, dumb, bald gorilla body slamming my armor back down to 36 points. It was trying to get it back up while headbanging furiously to Skull Hacker blaring in the background furiously. Gave a high explosive communion to this congregation. Right here, I'm not gonna lie to you. It was a real pain in the assisted social service to get my armor back up to where I needed it to be. It was almost like the demons didn't want to die or something. It was weird and annoying, but I finally managed it. Got my blood pressure taken, punched another box, then stumbled into another mosh pit arena. But this one I could take a few pot shots at some freaks before entering. This one started off great, but then went horribly sideways. So I had to zap these bugs BFG 9000 style. A couple of fat boys showed up. From what I could tell, they looked like they wanted some cookies. But I had to tell them I didn't have any cookies in the only way that they could possibly understand. Someone left a bunch of goodies and knickknacks in this room, as well as a free flu shot, with a great big door at the end of this room with one more box that I needed to punch. I flipped this switch, and you'll never guess what happened next. Not this attempt at a jump scare, that, 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 that's just obvious. What made no sense is that he locked himself in a room with me, with no means for him to escape. This ignoramus needed a good history lesson, but he was a difficult student to teach. So I had to lean forward in my chair to gain extra focus points. I had to improvise, adapt, and overcome. And what I mean by all that, I just shot more missiles at him than he was able to shoot at me. Then eventually he fell. Then I breathed a sigh of relief as I tossed a flare into the air, but it wasn't over. And it seemed that I only managed to make him even more pissed off at me. This section was a real struggle. I'm supposed to be shooting bullets, not sweating them. What's going on here? I didn't just die once or twice. Or thrice. I died a lot. 
It was really getting annoying. I was really getting flustered. I died a lot against this handsome bastard, but like the rest before him, the thought of defeat finally got through to his very thick skull. Feeling the need to add some variety, I went to another level. A nice ice level near the end of the game seemed fitting to kind of balance out all the fire, brimstone, and blood of the previous levels. This one was pretty much a breeze, with things going about as well as I expected. And I'm just going to reiterate, I'm still at ultraviolence difficulty. This tactic works very well with Berserk, as you can rip and tear your way through resupplying your armor like a kid tearing into a present on Christmas morning. So I was beginning to believe I was going to finish this level with my dignity intact. Oh boy, I was mistaken. I was terribly, terribly mistaken. After hopping aboard a train, I came to this section. Let me tell you, this one made me really sweat bullets. They came at me from all directions, all at once. There was nowhere I could go. There was nowhere I could hide. There were demons here and there and everywhere, and they were all very mad at me, and I couldn't figure out why. I mean, all I've done was foil their plans, kill their brethren, destroy their infrastructure, take their supplies, humiliate them at every chance, ritualistically slaughter them while periodically laughing and headbanging. Other than all that, I don't understand why they were mad at me. But I pushed through, even had the BFG them a few times. <laughs> even though there was this one time this stupid pink gorilla pig jumped in the way of my shot for his hideous homies. I do admire their tenacity though. With many bullets, bombs, chainsaw blades, I killed them to death until they died. Began the self-destruct sequence for this robo-brain and sent it out with a bang, finishing the level. In summary, these runes do make the vast majority of the game easy even on the hardest difficulty setting. But the weaknesses of this tactic is that you have to keep up with the continuous stream of fire while being in a place where you could be relatively stationary, but also having the option to escape when the enemies can see that they can flank you. Most of the game's shooting galleries will allow for this, but there are a few times where the game will switch it up on you, especially with enemy variety. Like I said before, it doesn't entirely break the balance of the whole game. <laughs> Only about 90% of it. Oh, I know, it's jaw-dropping! There will still be times where you'll need to zig and zag and be quick on your feet, but for the three and a half levels I used as samples for this video, the only times I actually died was against the Cyber Demon boss battle. Although that might be an issue just with bosses. Open mouth, insert foot! If you liked what you've seen and you want to see more, please click the like, comment below, and subscribe. Also, click the goofy bell icon to be notified for when I release another video. If you want to be a little bit more patriotic, Share this video to those you think may appreciate it, and I'll appreciate you with a hearty, proud salute. Little acts like that go a long way here. Once again, thanks for watching and how I think I broke Doom 2016.